whenever Adobe updates Lightroom and Photoshop, sometimes we get a bunch of features that are okay. And then every once in a while, we get that one new feature that is just fantastic and takes the show. And that happened, it's May of 2023. Uh, Adobe just released an update for Photoshop. And this tool that they just added is quickly becoming one of my favorite tools. I know it's gonna become one of your favorite tools. So we'll take a look at that and some of the other smaller features in this video, let's get started. Uh, we, we will start with the star of the show, which is the remove tool. It's grouped in with the spot healing brush and the healing brush. If for some reason you don't see it there, and you know for a fact you're using Photoshop 24.5 or later. Only other thing I can suggest you do is head up to the edit menu, go down to toolbar, see if you have any custom toolbar settings in there and always try to restore the defaults to see if that helps. If it doesn't, you'd have to contact Adobe. Okay, so the way this tool works, really, really simple. Um, not too many options with it. It's got a brush size, so we can change that size with the right and left bracket keys. And then it's got a couple of options up here, sample all layers. If we were working on a multi-layer document, we'd probably wanna turn that on and then remove after each stroke. I like to turn that off. The reason being is if I turn it on, the moment, the moment I let up on my mouse or trackpad, it's gonna do its thing and it's gonna remove something. And it works great. So the moment I do, the moment I let up, it, it does its job. The problem is, is when we get to an area up here I've got to keep my mouse or trackpad pressed down the entire time. And if I let up on it by accident and I don't have my brush stroke perfect, it's going to, it's going to generate that remove tool and, I, and I, I don't want it to. Okay. So that's for me, I like to turn that off most of the time. And then that just lets me paint a little bit more precisely and I don't have to keep doing it in one perfect paint stroke. Okay. So I can let up, I'm letting up on my mouse and trackpad here a lot of times and it's not, it's not filling it yet because I haven't told it to. So once I am done, then I can come up here, hit that checkbox and it'll get rid of that. Usually does a good job. It does work a little different every time. I, I practiced this before, it was perfect before. Here it left a couple little spots so I can just go in there and remove those spots and be done with it. We'll even give this one a try. This is where, you know, cloning and healing wouldn't have done a good job because you really didn't have anything to clone from if you wanted to work on this right side of the balloon. But now, remove is, this. it's a little bit more aware of everything that's around it. Uh, not perfect, but again, you can come in there, follow it up, and probably get rid of any little things there. It doesn't mean that you also might not need to do a little cleanup work with the clone stamp tool. I think, I think when you have these expectations of these tools that they're gonna work perfect, every single time right out of the box. I think that's a little bit of mismanaged expectations. So just understand they're really good tools. They might get you all the way there. They might get you 70% of the way there and you do the rest of the work, okay? So that's your remove tool. Again, I highly recommend turning off that remove after each stroke option. Another way to, to think of the remove tool is additive. So in this example here, I really like this cluster of flowers in the front. And to me, they died off right over here. You can see there's, it's just empty. So rather than thinking of it as removing something, I thought of it as adding, and I just painted over this area just to see what Photoshop would do. Well, how would Photoshop decide to fill this? Every time I do it, it's a little bit different, but most of the time it fills it with flowers in removing, there you go. And so it just, to me, that's a little bit more, I don't know, the, the symmetry of it's a little bit more pleasing to look at this way than it was before. So don't always think of it as getting rid of something, start to think of it as adding something and Photoshop is gonna look around that area to see what it should add. And sometimes it could do a really good job too. Okay, so that is your remove tool. Uh, there is something in the Photoshop beta. I'm not gonna talk about it because I don't really do betas. Um, I, it's just not something I care to install on my computer. But if you go to your Creative Cloud, you go to the Photoshop beta, you'll find tons of videos on it. Everybody's talking about this generative fill. It's like, you know, you cut out an area of a photo and then you use words to tell it what to fill it with. And it's using AI to, to fill that area with. So that's something you can look at. Again, I'm not gonna talk about it here because it is in beta and I don't, I'm not a big beta fan. Also, really quick, uh, very, very quick word from our sponsor. I would invite you to swing by mattk.com just go up to the top menu, click on courses or presets, and I've got a lot of Photoshop and Lightroom courses available. Um, I, I get a lot of really nice comments on them. So I, I, between, you know, my no light course, um, you know, my bird photography, wildlife editing, 
uh, any texture blending, my Photoshop system, my Lightroom system, my landscape editing course, some really popular courses inside of there. So I hope you'll swing by and uh, just check that out if you're looking to learn a little bit more about Photoshop or Lightroom. Back to our tutorial. Uh, another little thing you might see floating around here is this little, uh, this little context sensitive bar. Um, so what, what this is gonna do is give you options for whatever layer you're on. So here I'm on a background layer. So I can do select subject, I can do remove background. In fact, let's go to, let's go to this one here. So I can click on select subject, it's gonna make a selection for me. Once it makes that selection, it's gonna pop up near the selection and there's all these selection related tasks you might wanna do, all right? There's no new tasks in there. They're all things that have been available for a while, but they're things that we generally had to poke around in a menu to find. So you'll see there's just a lot of different things we could want to do with a selection from inverting it, just hover over, you'll see a lot of those things inside there. It's a little pop-up bar here if you wanna hide the bar. You can reset its location, uh, and then you can also drag it wherever you want. So if you don't want it down at the bottom, sometimes I, I, I actually kind of like it up there at the top, but everybody's a little bit different in the way that they like their work, their interface. If you were to go and add an adjustment layer, then you'll see that bar disappears because the only things you can do to that adjustment layer are listed right up here in the properties panel. If I add a new layer, you can see that bar pops up back here. So it is context sensitive to whatever you're working on inside of Photoshop. All right, let's get rid of those layers. Uh, a couple other things here. Let's switch over to this photo. Uh, if you go to the adjustments panel, and if you don't see it under window adjustments, you will see that now we have presets and there are visual presets. So find one that you like, click on more. See, there's a bunch of them inside here. So let's say I like the sunshine one. Once I find one I like, I can click on it and you'll see it creates a little layer group with layers inside of it. Okay, in this one, in this case, it only chose one uh, adjustment layer inside of there, but that's not necessarily always gonna happen. Although it just seems, there we go. There's one with two of them inside of it. So it's basically a preset and it's a preset that you can adjust because it's using adjustment layers to create that preset. Now, little gotcha here. I did not see that this was not available when I updated Photoshop and I had to do a little bit of poking around. I had to restart Photoshop twice for it to be available. So I installed the update, I restarted Photoshop, it wasn't there. I did a little poking around, I actually had to close down Photoshop and open it up again and then these presets were located inside there. So I'm not quite sure why that happens, but just know that there are some presets up there and then your individual adjustments are just listed uh, right below. They used to be in a group right at the, up there at the top and now they're just listed below. And then the last thing, if you're into any design type or even photographers can use gradients, uh, what we can do here is go to our uh, gradients. We'll go to our gradient picker here and I'll use something with a few colors inside of it. And when you go and you click and drag, now you've got these more interactive handles that you can work with. So uh, as you go through here, you can see I can not only move that, but you're gonna have handles inside of there. Depending on the gradient that I choose, here's another one. See, now I get two handles because there's three different colors in this gradient and I can control the fall off in between there. Okay, again, photographers do use gradients sometimes, so that could be helpful for you. If you do more design work, gradients tend to get used a little bit more often there. So uh, that would be something that just give you a more visual way to adjust it. Also, so while these updates are just for Photoshop, we didn't get any updates this month for Lightroom, but last month in April, we did. And they're, they're on the same high caliber as what we got here for Photoshop this time around. So if you haven't seen what those updates are, I encourage you to go check out that video to find out what was new.